Vanderbilt. Well, hello and welcome. I'm Iris Van Ruby, your host, and I am thrilled to have Beth Ostrander, who's a pleasure coach. Welcome, Beth. Thank you. Hello. I'm loving your new background. Love that color. It's just a little bit of pink right there. <laughs> oh, I really love it. Thank you. Thank nice view. All right, so let's start with what is a pleasure coach? What had you even choose that? Oh my. If we only had hours and days. <laughs> okay, short version. So grew up loving home and it was, um, my culture was religious, uh, evangelical religious culture, um, which was loving. And there was a lot of shutdown around pleasure because it was, you know, considered kind of uh, selfish, right? So there was a lot of shutdown that was, you know, years and years of kind of shutting down of what that was. And then it was really also around that physical pleasure thing. So intimate pleasure, sex, that all, body, bodies not to be trusted. So there was a lot of years. I'm now 46, a lot of years of shutting that down. I clinically diagnosed as depressed, which I know is very linked to repressing my pleasure. Anyway, so fast forward massive awakening after 20 plus years of counseling trying to find happy um i woke up to you know some really core beliefs shifted for me which opened up uh, a lot then i went on a journey and realized this journey of self-love through oh i also am a sexual being i have a body wait it exists <laughs> And so like bringing back the parts of me into balance, my mind, my body, my soul. And then along this way, thankfully I met you along the journey, yay. And, um, in, <laughs> and through this journey realized, wow, I really had shortchanged myself in pleasure, in career, in who the people were in my world, even who I chose to marry. I was married for 12 years and had made a choice based on maybe no one else will ask me. And good human, just not a good human fit for me. So, so then fast forward, I really needed to shift my career. This was what popped. I'm like, oh my gosh. So then on this journey, and now I now talk about pleasure and I make sure that we zoom in on the area of physical pleasure because it's so, unfortunately, still very taboo. And, and it's such a, a massive component of us as humans. And yet it's also about authentic pleasure in every area of our life because how we do one thing is how we do everything. So yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> and what a gift that you had to go through this journey so that you have this to offer our listeners. Yeah. I'm, I am, I am grateful for being on this side of it. And I think all of our journeys through whether you call it ugly darkness, mm -hmm. It's actually part of what I want to share today is one tiny piece is when we can see the gold inside of that, like, and, and that can be hard. And I mean, look where we're sitting right now in the world. This is, this is a, like for some very dark time. I know, I know a lot of people are dealing with a lot of chaos, a lot of uncertainty. So talk about that for sure. Yeah, so I want to address that and that when we had a conversation before we, we set up this call is we talked about, you know, what would be in the best interest of women that are single, maybe by choice, maybe not by choice, and are feeling isolated, alienated, lonely. And you came up with something really brilliant that there's actually a gift in being single so that they could avoid the pitfalls before they get into a committed relationship. So let's talk about that. What does that actually mean? Mm. Uh, like I, I, I think I got a little teary when we were talking because it just was so crisp and clear to me. I mean, I, it's been true in, in what I've observed, but just it was so crisp and clear in that moment we spoke that this is the gift, not only of being in, I liked how you termed it singledom, but also in this particular time. So, so many of us, I've been single for many years now, just am now entering into uh, a partnership, but singledom can be this strange place of isolation anyway. And even when we are dating, should we be choosing to intentionally date? Sometimes it can feel isolating or unnerving, all of that good stuff. <laughs> um, but then we're now in this time where we're very, uh, we're distanced physically from others. Maybe not always socially, but sometimes very much socially as well. And definitely dating has taken a weird turn. And then there's many of us who choose to not date, like intentionally be single. And as much as that actually is a really empowered and beautiful place, there are moments of feeling like, wow, is, is, this, is this how it is? Like, is this really like, cause I really can't put up with 
crap relationships, but is this how it is going to be? Like, so what I, what I really, really want to impart today <laughs> after working well, existing in my own marriage that didn't really work out so well. And I really looking back and analyzing, Oh, what, what was the pitfall there? Or what were the pitfalls? And then I work a lot with those I call lifers, those who are in committed relationships with people they really, really like, like they may get really angry at these people, but they're in this relationship because they either call them a soulmate or they're their person. Like it's the real deal. And yet intimacy is misaligned. Sometimes it's, it, physical intimacy and sometimes it's pure intimacy like really they're just there's a disconnect in intimacy feeling that vulnerable space so <clears throat> what I wanted to share is that being single being on your own is actually an advantage if you're wanting to really create a relationship that has very very aligned fully satisfying yummy kind of intimacy that like deep soul level intimacy that then expands into physical uh, intimacy. And okay, so what is the advantage? Yay, yay, all rah, rah, what's the advantage? <laughs> wow, I do preambles very long. So here, I'll stop it. The advantage is this, when I work with people who are in their long-term relationship, what I constantly have to share with them and I'm going to say it's true. We're all mistaken on this. I would say 99.9% .9 of us are. We think that our relationship, or I'm going, to, I'm going to term it sex life, which is intimate life, sex life, okay? Our intimate life is that. It's, oh, you hear people say all the time, oh, uh, my sex life is not going well. Or I have a great sex life. Or um, I have no sex life. A lot of people are single. They will phrase it that way. I, have, I, I don't need to talk to you, Beth, the pleasure coach, because I have no pleasure in my sex life. <laughs> there is no sex life. It's not existent. So when people are in relationship, that idea, that concept really trips them up. And so I'm going to share what trips them up so that you can really see your advantage. And then we can talk about how can you use your advantage to then avoid the pitfalls that show up. So major pitfall is that couples think that it's a thing that's not working. What I teach them is there's actually three things and maybe all three things are not working or maybe just one or two or whatever. So when you think about relationship, I want you to think about there's the me, there's the them, and then there's us joined. So when we call it our sex life, we generally put all three and we're saying that's not going well. But what I really usually spend the first four to six months really drilling in to the couples is that actually there's three of these sex lives happening. You and you came out of a uterus as a body form and I'm using the term sex life to capture your body relatedness in this world and how you interact um, all the way like to every, like hugs with your kids is actually part of your physical relatedness. We from birth had a relationship with our bodies. And then like, uh, even the whole, like when, you know, uncle, uncle George with the bad breath, you were forced to hug him. That was a bit of your beginning of your, your framing of your intimate life, because there was probably a breach in consent. My guess is many of our parents did not ask us, Hey, do you want to hug uncle George who has stinky breath? No, you were either forced to, or you felt, you know, compelled, guilted, whatever that was. Right. So, and then, and then a lot of us, obviously as kids were tactile. So we touch, touch uh, to find out their world, apple, oh, apple, banana. Uh, so we're doing the same of our bodies. Okay. So again, like, I'm just trying to show that this is what I have conversations with for four to six months with my clients who are in relationship to show your sex life isn't working. Yeah. Okay. We're all going to agree that there's something off, but is it in your journey? Is it in their journey? Is it in the joint journey? Maybe it's in all three. Maybe there's something stopping you because of body image or you're at high stress mode and you can't get into rest mode and therefore feel chill enough to actually want someone to touch you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that person is getting triggered by something you're saying because that's what their partner used to say to them in their past marriage. Or maybe that's what their mom and dad used to say to them. Or there was something that gets triggered that has nothing to do with you guys. So there might be bumps going on in both of your lives separately. And then so many of us have no clue what our erotic pleasure actually is. I, I teach around erotic blueprint. This is all very foreign information. So a lot of us did not get pleasure education. 
if we were lucky, we got a little bit of sex education, but it was very heavily fear-based or safety-based, not pleasure-based. So in the joint, for sure, there's stuff that's not working well. Usually we don't know what we want. We don't know how to communicate what we want. We often don't even know how to have a communication that's valid around intimacy and pleasure. So there's definitely stuff going on here, but mostly this all collapses. So all that to say, there is so much challenge for people in relationship to get over the fact that there's so much ping-ponging, so much misunderstanding, so much coming, that it takes them so much to just peel apart to then look at, wow, what do I actually want? Mm -hmm. So that's where the advantage is of those of us who are single, separate, even in this time, and maybe especially in this time where we're self-isolating or we're quarantined or whatever it is, we actually, when we're on our own, we have this advantage to find our authentic pleasure. And that's no easy task. And it is kind of easy, but it tends to get blocked. So we can talk about that, but that's the advantage. And so how do we take advantage of that? Yeah, and so my perspective, especially as women, we've been socialized to be a good girl, don't be selfish, take care of other people. And it's so easy when you're in a committed relationship to lose yourself, to not even know what it is that you want, and then feeling resentful, but not even knowing why you feel resentful. So I'm hearing that the gift in this is really get to knowing yourself what pleases you, what's pleasurable to you, what you feel like, don't feel like, what, what's in alignment with you. And then when you get into romantic relationship, it's so much easier to communicate and get what you need because you know it. Yes, and I'm gonna say this, because when I hear you say that, I, I can still put my single woman hat on. I can be like, yeah, but I don't wanna masturbate like 50, I'm gonna just be bold and speak plainly about sex here guys so um just notice if you had a cringe somewhere in your body because some of us have we actually have a lot of beliefs that say sex is bad and wrong and it might be subconscious still even though intellectually we're like of course masturbating is good but we may have a cringe in our body because there's some shame that's old just i just want to acknowledge that that might be going on so just really care for yourself if that's happening so <clears throat> when i hear you say that it's like oh great so i've got to masturbate and find out what i want i don't want to do that it's a lot of effort oh my gosh i want someone to do that for me blah blah, blah. like these run literally have run through my head <laughs> so i'm seeking truth and it didn't run it through my head at all so it's interesting how we're on two different tracks i'm just thinking right? pleasure <laughs> go ahead and that's why i'm i want to speak to those who might be hearing it that way because this is actually what here's the second piece that generally trips people up in long-term relationship. Another pitfall that you get an advantage of, because what you're saying, Iris, is exactly it. We're speaking pleasure in general. If you can discover your authentic pleasure in general, I'm telling you, it is a transferable skill. Does everyone know about transferable skills on your resume? I mean, it was drilled into me, right? What did you learn as an ice cream parlor maiden when you were like 14 that you can transfer to like, cause you want your bank teller role. So you can transfer the skill set. <laughs> and the key skill is really related to the key pitfall that you guys are going to have an advantage on as being in singledom. Key pitfall in relationship is what you alluded to. We don't know what we want because we're busy protecting or providing uh, or we're busy nurturing or whatever it is we're busy doing and thinking we shouldn't get pleasure. So I have clients constantly coming to me and saying, I don't know what I want. And they think they should figure out a list of what they want, but that's actually not it. It's the skill set. So this transferable skill <laughs> is actually pretty simple. It's the skill set of in this moment, this moment, I'm actually welcoming, welcoming you right now to do this with me. I'm going to ask a question of us. And in this moment, what do I want? And if we can build a skill set that in, I got my water. <laughs> exactly. Actually, I'm chilly. So I actually want a sweater. I feel, so, I feel chilly. Go ahead while I do a bit of yeah. a. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So in this moment, I got clear that my mouth was dry and I wanted a sip of water where normally, you know, I'm doing an interview. It doesn't matter if I'm itchy or thirsty, you know, you just focus on the interview and be with the person, the guest that's being interviewed. And yet in this moment, you gave me permission to go, actually, I'm thirsty. I'm going to pick up this cup of water and take a sip and, and have the pleasure 
of swallowing just this little bit of water. It's so uncomplicated. I love it. It is so uncomplicated. And if that skill set can be honed, and I'm telling you, if you, I, I share this with Iris other, other times, if every time you go pee or every time you take a sip of water or whatever it is you drink, coffee, tea, juice, you actually check in for one minute. If you did it one minute a day, this would, this would actually alter your level of pleasure in your whole entire life. What do I want right now? Like, what do I really want right now? And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, it is okay that we're not asking this of ourselves. I want to give you a break. Like, oh, this isn't something you have to fix right now. You're like, okay, I got to do this. Yeah, I got to do this. I got to get more pleasure in my life. We do this so easily. I want to actually tell you, there's a reason we don't do this. <laughs> it's that the minute we actually start to think about, like subconsciously, we subconsciously protect ourselves from thinking about what we want, because I don't know if you've noticed, but if you start to like think about what you want and almost immediately after, there are a thousand reasons why you shouldn't get it. You shouldn't have it. You can't have it. You won't get it. No one will let you. You don't have money. You don't have time. Blah, 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 blah. That's really uncomfortable and annoying and it doesn't feel good. So we tend to not actually even go entertain the idea of what we want. So there's a reason why we don't do this. Yeah, and you touched on a really good point because I know you for so long. We're actually friends. That picture that you know we uploaded is is us at the Halloween, <laughs> being our that was awesome. Stuff. And I really appreciate that you said yes to that photo. So yeah, that was fun. It's really who <laughs> we are at the core. And I swear I had a question. In this oh yeah, so the question was, <laughs> I know your history in the the lack of permission. Mm -hmm. to, to, to give yourself permission to feel pleasure, to fill in the blank. So if women are listening to this, and we're not talking about self-pleasuring, but we're mm -hmm. talking about any simple pleasure. If you grew up with a background of you're being too selfish, people in our race, culture, religion, whatever it is, don't do that. Who do yeah. you think you are to feel that? What would you say to, to those viewers that are watching that, that are really hitting that wall of like, but I don't have permission. And my family, they never gave me permission. It was bad. Yeah. And, and you may even just be feeling resistance in your body. And, and it may not even be a conscious thought. And Iris might be pointing to the, the body reaction you're having in this conversation. Like it, it would be more like a tension, some tension somewhere in your body. I grew up, my culture I grew up in was evangelical Christian, which was a culture of service, giving, um, be, be happy even if you weren't feeling happy. Happy and pleasure are not the same thing. Pleasure is something that's very authentic, that deeply feeds your, your true self. And that's, that's authentic pleasure. That's what that is. Um, so, <clears throat> so I, I, I'm sharing where I came from for a moment <clears throat> because most of us come from some culture, even in every culture, there's some like hints of religion coming in where we need to be good and behave and, and give and be kind and nurture and care and give and blah, da da And so to think that we can take a moment for ourselves, even if we intellectually get that, yes, we get it. We know the airplane analogy that we need to, you know, care for ourselves first. Even though we may intellectually understand that, practically doing that is another thing. Like it really does go against those years and years of not that, that not being a loud or right or good. Yeah. So, so what I would say to those of you that might be experiencing that, <clears throat> and I would just say, assume that you might be experiencing some level of that. Um, I would say, hmm, pleasure, authentic pleasure. Two, there's three reasons I want to say why it's so valid that will maybe get around that kind of default. I can't have this. One is physiologically we need to do that so we can get out of our stress mode to get into our rest mode and we won't sleep well unless we get out of our stress mode that's our sympathetic nervous system that has us coping with stress and chaos and uh, attack that's really important our bodies naturally do that 
pleasure is the part that gives it a signal. Our body's a signal that we, we can turn that off and we don't, we don't actually run out of energy. We don't burn out. So physiologically, we, we, we do pleasure like that often. We will lay down and have a rest, a nap. So there's, there's ways you're probably doing pleasure in some form, but you're doing it out of a health basis. And, and, and then there's another reason for doing pleasure is that when you actually find what's authentic pleasure to you, you actually, I don't know if you've noticed this, like Iris, when you took that drink of water, I think there was something that just had you calm. There was something that paused you. And so I don't know if you guys have noticed in an area of your life where you might have given yourself a moment to read a book you love, or maybe you've given yourself time to go on a vacation. And I'm even purposefully slowing down a little bit my, my, my pace, because even between my words, I'm giving myself permission to have pleasure between words. And in those moments of pleasure, there's, there's a calm and a peace. And I don't know about you, but when I feel more calm and peaceful, I'm a much nicer human. <laughs> and so if we're really in this track that we might, must be good people, being calm is a gift to the people around us because we're nicer humans. We're being better humans. So that's another reason that we can tell our brains yes pleasure is important and then thirdly another way to tell your brain hey this is actually allowable is that when we are actually reaching for a full authentic pleasure the one that aligns with our core values the one that aligns with like our higher self we're all you guys are all here we're all here iris and i are on this journey because we know that there's stuff covering up our most highest beautiful self. We know that. So we're being intentional. We want to move away the stuff that's not our highest version. Pleasure, reaching for your authentic pleasure is a shortcut to finding her. We will find our authentic true self by finding out what our authentic true self desires and gets fully fed by. So on the third reason to tell your wonderful brain that's trying to say, be a good human in the world, you can't take time out for yourself. You can say, actually, if I wanna bring my best self into the world and I wanna actually up level the level of peace in this world, I wanna to contribute to this world, I wanna find my true contribution to the world, aiming for your authentic pleasure allows you to find her, that higher version of you. Yeah, what came up for me as you were speaking is for those women that are watching that have been in relationships and were told they shouldn't feel that way, they're too needy, they're, you know, they're too much, they're too emotional. You know, I always tell women, you're only as needy as your unmet needs. And mm. what I'm hearing from you is that it's an invitation to connect to what are your needs or what is your pleasure in yes. this moment to feel that. The, the starvation you had another word for it but it, yeah i it is starvation i actually speak of it i it i have worked enough around this world of pleasure and i will hear from people who identify hey my sex life's not good i'm starving for sex pleasure whatever and then there's other people who are like i'm often it shows up as some sort of depression or anxiety or really like feeling is this it in the world for me so they will feel like there's something lacking and what I've noticed is we, as a general population, are starved for authentic pleasure, the one that really feeds that true place of us. Yeah, and that brings up another question for me. You know, this time of COVID, especially for single women who are mm. isolated, feeling lonely, they can fill it up with things like watching movies or running out of spaces to clean up or <laughs> turning to food. How yeah. do you differentiate between mm. watching a movie versus authentic pleasure? Oh my gosh, thank you. Because, oh my gosh, I love ice cream. Who, I wish I could see your hands. Uh, yeah, thank you. I love ice cream. There has been a journey for me around food. So I, I think I shared that I was clinically diagnosed with depression. I also struggled with an eating disorder. For me, it was binge eating. <clears throat> and so I went to a 12-step program to help me with that through the years. Um, so I know this world of what's authentic pleasure. Well, now I know this, but back then I, I, I was aiming for 
feeding myself. I, I shared earlier, uh, we were chatting earlier, and I was talking about this like starved, if you imagine a starved ravenous wolf rah, gnawing at their paw because they're, they're a little crazed, right? Like if you're starving, you do things that are a little bit outside of your normal character. So most of us have pleasure that is repressed because we're just brought up to not, not actually eat our pleasure, not even look at what our authentic pleasure is, whatever reason it was. For me, religious culture, for others, different things, okay? So if you imagine this is your authentic pleasure in here, inside of your core, they are true, never, I mean, kids, kids know this right from the beginning, but we, we, we slowly got that shut down. We shut it down so that those in our world that were telling us to behave, stop doing that, stop being so selfish, we kind of took on that role for ourselves to protect ourselves. So, okay, so you're imagining this, that your true authentic pleasure here aligned with your values, your true most highest self, your pleasure type, we can get into that after if we want, um, that that really what, what's happening is with those, those moments where I, I used to eat like lots of ice cream, like lots and lots of ice cream, but not ever feeling satisfied and actually feeling like crap after. That's the kind of thing you're saying like, okay, am I binge watching Netflix or am I actually choosing like to sit in my authentic pleasure in Netflix? What happens is if it's not your authentic pleasure, it's gonna like show up like, like wonky and it will be fed by these little bits of kind of more um what's the word it's like more of a frantic frenetic uh must fill fill a void that kind of sensation and then what happens is it may actually feel it like man did i ever actually get numbed out and it filled something for me for a time but it was not lasting it was it was like you know how they say if you want lasting food, you're going to eat protein because it lasts longer. It's like that. So if, if you're going to have, have a sensation of satisfied pleasure, it needs to feed that authentic pleasure. And you can tell the difference. There's when you're feeding your authentic pleasure, there's like joy associated. There's like a true, like, Oh, that felt, yep. Yeah, that was hit. That hit the, that hit the, what that hit it. I don't, I can't think of the phrase, Stop. but the spot. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I'm hearing is differentiating the two is you, you mentioned it is that when you are doing this as a distraction to something you don't want to feel, you're actually numbing out either through Netflix or ice cream. I'm going to use those two. Sure. Or you could do it through authentic pleasure and enjoy the ice cream and the movie. It's not a black and white. You can't do this, but yeah. No. Not at all. Ah. And, it's, and, and it's strange because, I mean, I wish there could be a conversation back and forth because you'd be like, well, what's the nuance? What's the difference? What's this and this and this? I'm going to say that it's as simple as this. Spending a moment to feel all the feelings will make the difference. Yeah. So let's talk about when we take this information and we apply it, how's that going to make a difference when we finally meet them, one of our dreams and that Bernadette sentence? Yeah, good. Okay. Yay. Right. I get so like into the nitty gritty of the nerding out. I do nerd out sessions in my, in my world. Anyway, so thank you, Iris. So how does this apply? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I wish I could, oh, oh, oh. I want, can I, I'm going to hold up something. Yeah, sure. So we can, I'm going to talk about this thing called pleasure method. Okay. Can you see it or is it backwards? No, no, we can see it. Okay, good. So I'm going to speak to this, um, the pleasure method. So I'm going to say it and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk specifically about the first two and how that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So this is pleasure in general that can be transferable to any area of your life, career, dating, relationship, uh, sex, all of it. Okay. So the top one is where uh, we're going to just start. It's a circular thing, but discover your pleasure, discover your authentic pleasure. Then you're going to actually determine what is your pleasure block that's happening because so often of us, we're not having authentic pleasure because we just got blocked. I'll tell you in a minute more about this. Embrace all your pleasure. So when you realize what blocked you, just name it in that moment. And then when, you ha when you're fully resourced, maybe you're, having, you're on one of the group calls with Iris, and then you're like, I wanna tackle this block that comes up because I'd like it to go away. Can you name some of the blocks? Because when ah. someone, like, what does that mean? Uh, okay, so when we're, these are some of the pitfalls of relationship, which either you've been in a relationship and you're fully aware of these or you dread these, where your partner thinks your body's ugly. 
That's a total block where you don't want the lights on because I'm embarrassed of how I look now. I wish I had the body I had back whenever. And so that's one really big block. Um, I don't know what I'm doing in bed and, and they expect me to know. I don't know how to date. I don't know how to talk about what I want and I don't want to get this sex crazed person, but I also don't want this dud of a person. These are all blocks that happen throughout the dating and then you get into a relationship, okay? So then if you can name those blocks, and then later you embrace them all and you discover what's the gold in that. I don't know, Iris, you, you, you talked about it earlier. My journey allowed me now to be able to do this. So every ugly nugget, if you sift away like an archaeologist, you'll find the golden nugget in that of true, even deeper pleasure, okay? Then, then you expand your capacity for pleasure. And this is actually, there's ways to do this, simple, simple ways. And then I want, you, I want you to notice this, sharing pleasure is way at the end of this cycle. And so what I wanna say is this, when people are in relationship already, I have to pry them apart. Stop blaming themselves, stop blaming the other. I feel like I'm a parent to two children. <laughs> We pull them apart and then they get to go on their own journey to learn this cycle of how do you discover your authentic pleasure? How do you identify your own pleasure block? Because what happens is you're in this togetherness and so all of a sudden you're like pinging up against their block, which they're putting on you and they're blaming at you. So all of a sudden you're swirling, dealing with some issue they've got, but all of a sudden you're having an issue because now you feel like, Oh, so it's like you're caught in that cycle. So what your, what your advantage is now is if you can learn this sequence, if you can learn this sequence, how do I discover my authentic pleasure? How do I determine my pleasure block? How do I then pause at some point in the, when I'm resourced and take my pleasure block and, and, and find the golden nugget inside that is even deeper pleasure? How do I actually expand my capacity for pleasure? I'm telling you, if you can do that in your singledom, you will enter into, you will actually choose a partner who also has the capacity to do this. So that when you get into relationship, you do not have to do as much heavy. I'm, you're always going to mirror up against each other and you're going to ping pong, but you are going to know the rules of the game. You are going to understand yourself. You're going to know when it's your ping pong problem that's blocking you, this pleasure block of yours. You're going to know when their pleasure block is blocking. And you're going to know how to speak because when we know our authentic, most of us, okay, think of this. If you go to the store and you do not know what you want, you will actually either spend too much money or you will walk away with something you do not like, or you will walk away with nothing. I mean, unless you went there just to window shop, that's a different experience. It is when we get clear on what we desire that you can communicate and actually create the thing you want. Yeah, and I wanna address a couple of things that you said for our yeah. viewers to notice, and you talked about this earlier, Beth, any cringing when she talked about embracing your pleasures, expanding your pleasure, sharing your pleasure, and, and you know that that's bringing up some of your blocks. And what I love that you talked about is, I always say relationships are like jigsaw puzzles where two pieces fit each other exactly, otherwise you can't put them together, and that if you have blocks to pleasure, blocks to believing that you deserve to be treated with respect, even though you might know it here, but you have something else in your core that you've learned from childhood, you're going to attract a partner that reflects what you believe about yourself. And so I'm going to put words in your mouth, Beth. You're inviting our viewers to expand their ability to give themselves permission and to experience pleasure so that they can attract a partner that gives them that space and also expands their pleasure on all levels, not just sexual oh my gosh i'm so i love thank you for for bringing that together and put it that way yeah i am welcoming you exactly that so that you, just like with you've done it all i know you've done work on your world i know it you're here because you've been doing work you've been sifting into what is it i want in the area of this how, how do i want to be so i can have a man show up who who, who he matches me meaning he, he's at that same um, vibration or level or, or we can meet here, right? You have been up leveling areas of your life so much. This is my invitation 
to while you're single up level your capacity for pleasure become aware of your pleasure blocks before you start bumping up against them with another person because if you can bump up against them around food around what movie you want to watch around how you handle COVID, how your finance if you can actually discover pleasure in any scenario on your own and you notice what's blocking you from feeling fully satisfied and you can actually even learn how to get support to to wow talk about your pleasure if you can even say i want pleasure even that that phrasing and, and that becomes a natural way i desire this right now i desire that right now yeah and bernadette just said you could even enjoy nature together sleep under the stars and you want to notice whether you have permission in a relationship from yourself mm. to enjoy those things or whether you diminish those because you have no right to enjoy whatever your cultural religious you know racial upbringing has been and that if you allow all of those things and you attract a partner that's in alignment with what it is that you allow yourself I want to I'm realizing this is reminding me of one like the third pitfall so we've talked about two pitfalls that this will help you avoid one was that you 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 know there are three distinct journeys going on remember that we all think we have the sex life that's not going well or going well but there's actually three my sex life their sex life the joint the second the pitfall was we think we have to know what we want like we have to find our prescription to pleasure whether it's like i need to know what kind of food i love all the time i need to know what kind of uh sex gives me sexual pleasure all the time i need to know this but in fact it's the magic trick the transferable skill of knowing what i want right now in every given moment and iris you spoke about water i spoke about feeling cold it is the skill set of wow what do i really want right now so those are pitfalls you can avoid and practice and become very skilled at and third another major major pitfall <clears throat> is that we like like it's i think this is pretty well known now we know that we are responsible for our own happiness we don't get into a relationship so a partner can make us happy we i'm pretty sure most of us here know that we also know we're not responsible for our partner's happiness. Oh, Will Smith and um, Jada Pinkett, they talk about this on the red table and they talk about how they've really owned this. And that's what's had them survive through some really bumpy times because they know Will's not responsible for Jada's happiness and Jada's not responsible for Will's happiness. Very, very well known. So here's the pitfall. We are self-responsible for pleasure, even the naked kind of pleasure doesn't mean you have to masturbate for the rest of your life. I don't mean that. I mean that when couples, and I'm going to share from what happens in coupledom, so you can see that you have an advantage in singledom, okay? What happens in coupledom is that we come and we like say we're, we're having a romantic moment, we're having romantic time uh, leading up to maybe more physical intimacy or maybe not. Maybe just uh, we're going to spend time together and then we we go our separate ways, whatever that is, that form of pleasure. Maybe we've gone for a walk in the woods and enjoyed na uh, nature, right? If you are there solely so that your partner can get what they want, okay? So hear me this. So I'm speaking this specifically to us women who tend to be really great at actually ensuring our partners or those in our life get what they want. So often we show up and we're like, yeah, I can intuit here. I know, I know they want this. So let's say, uh, I think they'd like this for dinner. I'm going to give them a good dinner. Um, I think they'd love it if I give them a foot massage or a back massage, or maybe they want me to do sexual acts. I know that. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you this. Most couples, a thing that shifts everything for them is if they, yes, absolutely get pleasure out of bringing joy into your partner's life. But if they actually come in and say, wow, will that give me joy? Will I enjoy cooking that meal? How can I enjoy cooking that meal? And then will I enjoy giving a massage? And if you don't, don't give the massage. But if you do find a way, wow, maybe you can get the kind of massage oil you enjoy, right? So I'm talking, I'm talking about relationship. I'm going to bring it back to single them, okay? Because the pitfall is, and so I will tell partners, you are responsible for the cake and your partner is the icing on the cake. And the biggest pitfall is couples long time, they're past their honeymoon phase and they're still expecting their partner 
to really like it and, and praise them when they provide all the pleasure their partner wants. They want praise and acknowledgement or they want their partner to, to give them all their, like it's like tit for tat. You, I did this, you do that, blah, 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 blah. That is such a big pitfall. And if we come in and we are fully present to being self-responsible for our pleasure in a relationship, I'm going to bring it back to singledom, so bear with me. I know I'm ho hovering here, but this is a massive pitfall you can avoid. We then can come in fully fed, and then we are grateful for the icing on the cake. And if the icing doesn't actually show up and it's crappy icing, man, did we ever enjoy that cake, okay? So we walk away ensuring our satisfaction. Okay, so now what does that mean for singledom? It means if we really get self-responsible for our pleasure like we are already self-responsible for our happiness i'm telling you the vibe you send out when you get ready to date or when dating becomes simple or easy or aligned with you the vibe you come off with is not a pleasure starved vibe you know so you think of someone who is not happy and they're out there dating they get a certain kind of person we all know this if you're desperate for someone to make you happy you get a certain kind of person. Because you will take crumbs when you're desperate. Thank Those you. are my words. Thank you. I know you talk about this. I know this conversation comes up a lot in your work, Iris. I want to take that skill you've learned with Iris and I want to transfer it to pleasure. If you are fully capable to find your pleasure, and I'm talking in everyday life, maybe you love tennis, but you've never taken the time to learn tennis because you've been busy. You've never really thought it's, it's allowable. No, I can't give myself time for tennis. Even now, you could watch videos to learn tennis. There's always reasons we say we can't have our pleasure, and there's always ways to be creative to have our pleasure. And if you can take self-responsibility to, to have your pleasure and start to fill your life with pleasure, and I'm telling you, ah, I feel like there's one more piece I want to add in here. So take it if you can fit it into what I'm saying, okay? We can actually fill up our pleasure cup in every area of our life because we're pleasure starved. And when our pleasure cup gets filled up in one area of our life, it's filling up our whole pleasure. So we may not be in intimate relationships with people right now for choice or by circumstance. But if you fill up your whole life with authentic pleasure, you look around your home and you look, and, and we talk about Marie Kondo and, and doing the joy uh, of our environment. And if you actually feel pleasure and joy from your environment, oh my gosh, you filled up your pleasure tank, I'm telling you. And you're not as starved, even if you went in and you had your whole house filled up with pleasure, and like, I don't mean fill, it could be emptied <laughs> from all the clutter, I don't know. But you filled up your pleasure tank in your environment or, or in the food you choose or the clothes you wear or, the, or, or the, maybe you're a minimalist and you've been sucked into this culture of stuff, stuff, stuff. And actually it's minimizing what you have. And you fill up authentic pleasure in all areas, your career, the people in your world. I'm telling you, you are filling your pleasure tank and who you show up in is dating. And how you will start to exist in a relationship when your pleasure is full, you are not showing up as a pleasure-starved, ravenous, crazed fox who behaves inappropriate, like chewing off its own limb or chewing off someone else's limb that it didn't need to mean to. And I'm telling you, that is the third most massive pitfall that couples land in. And you, in this place of single, singledom, have an advantage because you can build that muscle. And the part that I want to add is when you get really good at this, your bar for what you expect in relationship will go higher. Yes. That's part of changing your type. Whatever you've been attracted in the past has reflected your capacity to give yourself permission to enjoy, to ask, to need. And Beth is inviting you to show up in a different way so that you're filling yourself up in that jigsaw puzzle that you're going to attract will reflect your capacity for pleasure. I want to break this, bring this to very, very simple, simple ways to do this <clears throat> because this shifts in simple, minute moments of your day. Like that. <laughs> 
taking a moment to check in what do I want right now. So I'm actually going to welcome you. You could literally take 10 seconds right now. And if you did this 10 seconds a day, I hope I'm in your head. So every time you go to the washroom, brush your teeth, drink a glass of water, you're going to remember Crazy Beth <laughs> in her, and Iris. In fact, remember our image of us being silly, wearing those silly costumes. And just check in. What do I want right now? What would bring me laughter? What would bring me calm? What would I let my tiny little child self do right now? These are all ways we can find access and you do it for like 10 seconds. So right now, I'm gonna welcome you. What do you wanna do right now? It could be as simple as like my foot's falling asleep. It's shifting your, your foot. Yeah, it could be having a glass of water. Could be stretching. Could be like, oh my gosh, just wiggling. Could be putting music, be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go put my favorite music on and dance to it afterwards, right? So that is one, if you did that for, the, for once a week, once a day, it will already start to shift this for you. And if it's not even the changing of it, it's the observation of it. And just start noticing. I'm sure you're going to, you know, one moment, maybe as you're just dropping off the bed or you're in the shower, you're like, oh, yeah, I haven't had pleasure, really. I haven't had pleasure for a while. So then simple little things that we were, we were chatting earlier, you could add one extra minute in the shower where it wasn't function based. You weren't doing your hair, you weren't doing your shaving, whatever it was, but it was one extra minute in the shower where you literally just paused. Yeah. Maybe it's like you love the scent of the soap or you like the heat of the, sh the shampoo. That will shift everything after that shower if you took one extra minute just to enjoy it. And with that, Beth, I want to say thank you so much for the time that you've given us, for the strategies you've shared with us, and for the difference you make in my world mm. and the whole world out there as well. <laughs> thanks. I so enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks so much for the conversation and for bringing this conversation out where we can find, as single women, really, we can really find what is the benefit, what is the advantage to this time to create the real deal that we want. And how much more you bring to relationship when your cup is full. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.